if you want to understand China's position uh, on the Ukraine war, don't trust the Anglo-Saxon media. Because if you read the Anglo-Saxon media, and I give you a couple of examples like the Economist, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, you will get a very black and white picture of China's position on the Ukraine war saying, oh, China is taking Russia's side and therefore China is wrong and China is evil and China should be condemned. Now, of course, that black and white picture is completely wrong because it is very clear that China has not supported Russia in its invasion of Ukraine in any way. Of course, China hasn't condemned Russia, but then China is not alone there. One of the best friends of the West is the largest democracy in the world, India, and India also actually hasn't condemned Russia for its invasion of Ukraine, because in geopolitics, everything is very complicated. Countries like China and India and South Africa or Brazil have to weigh a lot of considerations before they work out what their positions are. They have their own national interests. And so China has actually been very, very careful about the position is taken on Ukraine war. It hasn't uh, condemned Russia, but at the same time, it's kept up its ties with Ukraine. And indeed, actually, the Ukrainian government still maintains good relations with China. And Ukraine has always been actually a major trading partner of China, and China is doing its best uh, to keep up uh, its trade with uh, Ukraine. And I suspect quietly behind the scenes, also trying to find ways and means uh, of seeing whether a solution uh, can be found. And of course, you will see more of that uh, in the G20 meeting, uh, which is actually taking place today as we speak in uh, G20 foreign ministers meeting, which is taking place today in, in, in Bali. But overall, the key point I want to make is that China could have actually taken a position of fully supporting uh, Russia in this war, but it's been very careful to ensure that it's kept a certain uh, distance from it. And of course, it's true that uh, uh, China's and Russian leaders did say, as you know, in February this year, they met just before the invasion of Ukraine, and they did issue a statement saying there are no limits to the partnership between uh, China and Russia. But that, I think, was referring to the broader relationship. And here, the, in the broader relationship, it's quite natural for China and Russia to come together because both are under severe pressure from the West, for different reasons, by the way. Because Russia is clearly not seen as a long-term challenge or threat to Western dominance, certainly American dominance. But China is clearly seen as a threat to uh, um, uh, certainly American dominance. And as you all know, a major geopolitical contest uh, has broken out between uh, United States and, and China. And of course, you want to, if you want to understand the origins, the structural forces that are driving it, what will be the outcome, who will win this US-China contest, I've actually documented all that in my book, Has China Won, uh, which is available. And, and, and if you want to know more about that, subject, I would suggest you look at that book. And of course, it's because of that larger geopolitical contest with China under pressure from the West that it has kept up its partnership uh, with Russia. But if you read my book, uh, Has China Won, you will also say, you will also see, and this was written two years ago, uh, that on the China-Russia relationship over the long run, they will actually have divergent goals because in many ways, even though right now Russia's main focus, main pressure is coming from the West, from Europe, and so on and so forth, in the long run, Russia will worry more about the rise of China. Russia has the longest border with China. And so in, in the long run, actually, it's conceivable that Russia and Europe may actually come together and, and, and work together. So I, I want to emphasize all this because I began my remarks by saying that this whole 
geopolitical uh, situation is very complex. And I hope that my remarks so far have brought out and drawn out the complexity of the subject and, and in many ways differ sharply from the simple black and white perspective that you get from the Anglo-Saxon media, which frankly is downright wrong. So if you see an article from The Economist or from the New York Times on China and Russia, be very wary. Don't trust them because they have an agenda in what they're writing and they have actually, they're not being uh, fair and accurate and objective uh, in their reporting uh, on the subject. 姐妹们总烦恼脸上细纹、干燥与暗沉。现在起，跟我一起放心交给 KS Royal Face 皇家颜值逆时奇迹系列。KS Royal Face 皇家颜值逆时奇迹系列，它添加五种 EGF， 专门防止肌肤老化，强化皮肤修复，增加肌肤弹性水嫩，轻松抚平皱纹，换回青春自信。KS Royal Face 皇家颜值逆时奇迹，果肤露全效精华，精华霜，即刻启动冻龄密码。